Once upon a time, there was a poor widow who lived with her son. Her son Jack did not work because he was a very lazy young man. That was why they almost had no money. Mom, is there anything to eat? I'm hungry. Each passing day, they had become poorer and poorer, until they had come to a point where they had to sell their cow, Milk White, because they could no longer feed her. Jack's mother told him to bring the cow to the marketplace and sell it for the best price he could get. Maybe then they could buy some food to eat. On his way to the market, Jack came across a somewhat weird-looking old man. The old man had a look at the cow and turned to Jack and said, "Hi, my boy. If you give me this cow, I will give you very valuable things in return." Jack was very happy to hear this. The old man took out five beans from his pocket. Beans? But these are magic beans. Jack, of course, did not believe him at first. But the old man insisted. Look, young man, you seem like a good and bright kid. Take these magic beans. You won't regret it. Trust me. Jack believed the old man and gave him milk white in return for the magic beans. Happy with the exchange he had made, Jack ran home. Ma, look what I've got! Seeing Jack running to her so excited, his mother thought that he had sold the cow for a lot of money. But then, when Jack showed her the magic beans, his mum was pretty cross. She threw the magic beans into the garden and sent Jack to his room. You were grounded in your room until I tell you to come out, and no dinner for you tonight. In the morning. Jack looked out the window, and he could not believe his eyes. From his bedroom window, he could see a stalk growing up really fast. This was neither a tree or a giant flower. This was a magic beanstalk. Jack jumped on the giant beanstalk from his window, using the leaves and the twisty vines like the rungs of a ladder. He started to climb up the beanstalk. After a while, he found himself in a weird place where everything was much bigger than normal. He saw a path full of flowers and a very big house at the end of it. Jack came to the house. And knocked on the door. A lady giant answered. Uh, well, I was going to ask if you had something to eat. Yes, I do. But you must disappear before my husband gets back, because he loves the taste of young children, and so he eats them up. Jack, of course, was a bit frightened, but also he was very hungry. Just as he was sitting at the table to have a bite, he heard someone talking outside with a deep voice. Fifi fo foes, I smell a child with my nose, raw or cooked. I don't mind. I can't get enough of those. The woman called out to Jack. Hide in the oven right this moment, my child. Jack hid in the oven at once. The giant went into the kitchen and started to sniff around. I can smell children. What are you talking about, dear? You're probably smelling the meat I've given the cats yesterday. After he had finished his dinner, the giant started to count his gold.
After a short while, he was tired from counting the gold, and so he fell asleep. Jack came out of the oven and took a bag of gold. He threw the bag right under his magic beanstalk. Then off he went down holding onto the beanstalk. He found the bag of gold he threw down and ran home right away. When Jack's mother saw the gold, she was very happy. From that day on, there would be no more poverty or hunger for them. But after a few months had passed by, all the gold they had finished. With no other option, Jack climbed up the beanstalk and went to the house of the giants. The giant's wife was somewhat a little suspicious of him this time. Last time you were here, we lost a bag of gold. But still she pitied the young boy and invited him in. Not long after, the giant came home. Fifi fo foes, I smell a child with my nose. Raw or cooked, I don't mind. I can't get enough of those. Hearing the giant's song, Jack jumped into the oven once again. After finishing his dinner, the giant asked his wife to bring his chicken. When his wife brought the chicken, he ordered the chicken to lay an egg. Leaving Jack fully surprised, the chicken laid a golden egg. And when the giant went to his room to rest, Jack came out of the oven and took the chicken and rushed down the beanstalk. Thanks to the golden egg, Jack and his mother were rich once again. But after some time had passed, Jack decided to try his luck once again and started to climb up the magic beanstalk. This time he went into the house without being seen by the wife and hid in a big copper pot. Some time later the giant came home. Fifi fo foes. I smell a child with my nose, raw or cooked. I don't mind, I can't get enough of those. This time the giant's wife decided she wanted Jack caught. If there is a child around here, then it should be in the oven. Of course Jack had hid somewhere else this time. The giant and his wife were determined to find the child, but although they searched everywhere in the house, they just could not find him. After their dinner, the giant put a golden harp on the table, and so he ordered play. Playing lullabies, the harp put the giant to sleep. At that moment, Jack knew that he wanted this harp more than anything else in the world. In order to do so, he climbed up the sleeping giant's knee, jumped on the table and to the harp. Something really unexpected happened. Help! The harp yelled! Jack jumped down the table with the harp on his back. The giant woke up and started to run after him. Jack started to slide down the beanstalk as fast as he could and the giant followed. When he reached home, Jack called to his mother. Mom, quick, bring me an axe. They both started to cut down the beanstalk. And finally, the beanstalk, and of course the giant, bound down on the ground with a big noise. They were safe from the giant. Oh good, we're safe. They were safe all right, 
but Jack was very regretful of all the things he had done. He almost lost his life because of his greed. He promised his mother that he would never ever steal from anyone again and that he would work really hard from now on. From that day on, Jack and his mother were never poor again. Yes, they did have the golden egg laying chicken to help, but Jack also never stopped working ever again. lived a family not too far out from where we all lived. The Darling family. The Darling family had three children. Their names were Jan, Michael and Wendy. Wendy would always tell her mum how Peter Pan would always play the flute in her room. Her mother would always tell her that she was imagining things but couldn't help but notice the leaves in the room, which always confused her a bit. Wendy would always say that the leaves fall off Peter Pan. One night, when their parents went out for the night, the kids were left home all alone, and when they got sleepy, they all went to sleep. Peter Pan silently entered their room and started looking for the leaves he had left behind. At that moment, Wendy woke up. Peter Pan, I was waiting for you. Nobody would believe that you're real. Wendy gave back the leaves she had been hiding for Peter. She really liked Peter, and so they sewed his leaves back on his clothing. Wendy, would you like me to tell you an amazing adventure story? I don't want to hear about an adventure. I want to live one, Peter Pan. Right at that moment, Peter's small fairy friend, Tinkerbell, entered through the window. Well, of course. I knew you'd be here. Are you getting ready for a new adventure without me? You know it's not possible for me to do anything without you. Wendy woke her siblings up. The siblings looked at Peter Pan and Tinkerbell with great confusion. Well, are you ready to fly? Tinkerbell scattered her fairy dust and off they went floating into thin air. And all together they left the house. The kids headed towards Neverland at once. After a long journey, they arrived at Neverland, and there they were. The mermaids wild animals, Indians, pirates, and the lost boys were there too. Amongst them all was the most dangerous of them called Captain Hook. Captain Hook was Peter Pan's enemy. The reason for this was because when they were fighting, Peter cut his arm and a huge crocodile ate it. Along with his arm, he also swallowed his watch, and because of this, the crocodile would always make a tick-tock noise. And so Captain Hook would always know if the crocodile was near from the noise. When looking around with his binoculars on the deck, Captain Hook spotted Peter Pan and kids looking at him from the top of a hill. He immediately ordered the men to fire the cannons. It was very hard for Peter Pan and the kids to get away from the cannons. Tinkerbell, you take the kids to a safe place. I will deal with Hook. Tinkerbell was very jealous of Wendy, so she wanted to keep her away from Peter Pan. With some made-up excuse, she left Wendy back on the hill and brought Jan and Michael to a safe place down at the beach. The lost boys who lived on the island saw Wendy from afar and thinking that she was an enemy, they wounded her. 
At the same time, Peter Pan was fighting with Captain Hawk. But seeing the crocodile that got his arm suddenly reappearing, Hawk ran away in fear. Ah! Whilst Peter Pan was coming back, he saw Wendy lying on the rocks wounded, and he was very upset. And the lost boys were very sorry when they realized that the girl that they had wounded was Peter Pan's friend. I have left the kids in your care. Tinker Bell was so sorry, she also realized that what she did was wrong. I am so sorry, Peter. This will never happen again, I promise. Lost Boys made a beautiful home for Wendy and her brothers. At night, they all would sleep in the house underneath the trees, listening to Wendy's stories. And Peter Pan would keep guard in front of the house. One day, when they were resting on the rocks, they spotted the pirates approaching. The pirates took the Indian chief's daughter hostage. Peter Pan and the boys went after to save the chief's daughter. And there was a big battle between them and the pirates. In the end, they saved his daughter and brought her to the chief. After that day, the Indians, Peter Pan and the Lost Boys became very close friends. In fact, the chief ordered two of his best men in Peter Pan's command to guard the boys. Of course, Captain Hook was furious about this. One day I will beat you, Peter Pan, and you will not be able to get away. One night, when Wendy started to tell the story of her family, Peter realized how much she and her brothers missed their home. So he told them that they could go back if they wanted to, but that he wanted to stay. When they all were packing up for their long journey, they were attacked by the pirates. The pirates caught the boys after they set up a trap to the Indians and captured them. Peter Pan was sleeping at home not knowing all that happened to the boys. Captain Hook saw him sleeping. But he could not open the door to Peter Pan's treehouse. Still, he poured the poison in the bottle he was carrying under the door, causing Peter Pan to sleep for hours. Peter Pan slept one whole day, and when he woke up, Tinkerbell entered. After she told him all that had happened, Peter Pan and Tinkerbell went out to rescue the boys. When they arrived to the Happy Rock, the pirates' headquarters, they saw that there was no pirate on guard. And when they went over to the other side of the rock, they were shocked from what they saw. Wendy, Jan and Michael and the last boys were all tied up to the poles and Captain Hawk was holding a torch in flames. Say your last words. <laughs> As their eldest, Wendy began to talk. Dear friends, my last words to you will be the words your real mothers would have told you. If they were here, they would have told you not to be afraid and be courageous to face your death. Don't be afraid. Kindness always wins. Always. Captain Hook got very angry with Wendy's words, so he brought her to the boat and tied her to the big pole. At this moment, Peter Pan and Tinkerbell reached out to save the boys. At the same time, the Indians and their chief came to help. This made Peter Pan so happy, because with their help, they rescued the boys. It was now time to get Wendy. Peter Pan and the Lost Boys got on Captain Hook's ship, where only a few pirates remained. And when they realised that they would be beaten, they jumped off the ship. There's nowhere to hide, Hook. Surrender! Peter Pan and the Lost Boys started to charge towards Captain Hook. 
pushing him to walk backwards. And suddenly, he heard the noise, the one noise that he was most afraid of. When Captain Hook looked back in fear, he saw the croc waiting for him to fall down into the water. Help! In a flash, he ran to the other side of the boat, jumped and started to swim as fast as he could. Peter Pan and the Lost Boys began to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> From that moment on, Hook's ship belonged to the Lost Boys and their captain was Peter Pan. The crew is ready for your orders, Captain Peter. Sail away! The boys untied the ropes and the sails blew up with all their might. Tinkerbell, fly us away to the home of the Darling family. The kids were very happy to hear this. Wendy, Jan and Michael were going to reunite with their parents they had dearly missed. When Tinkerbell sprinkled the fairy dust, suddenly the ship was airborne and started to fly in the sky. Wendy was restless to get home and tell her parents all about Peter Pan, Tinkerbell and the Neverland. From that day on, Neverland was going to be their second home and Peter Pan their best friend. <laughs> <laughs>